Howdy everyone, it's draft season and welcome to the first mock draft of 2024. I'm just going to go over a couple of things before we get going. I'm going to start with the Rangers at number 30 and I'm going to go to the Guardians at number one. I'm also not going to be covering the incentive picks for the Diamondbacks or the Orioles, the compensation pick for the Twins or the competitive balance round. I'm just going to keep this simple, go over each team's first pick for the first round. So let's get to it. At number 30, I have the Texas Rangers picking shortstop Wyatt Sanford out of Independence High School in Texas. Now, when it comes to defense, this is probably one of the best defensive shortstops in this class. Offensively, still needs some work. Definitely makes a lot of contact, line drive kind of a hitter, but not a lot of power as of right now. But I think there's a lot of upside here because of the athleticism that he has. He has a 60 run along with a 60 field, a 55 arm. And again, the contact is there. They give him a 50 hit as of right now but the power needs to increase so as of right now he's number 35 on pipeline and number 42 on baseball america i think this would be a good high upside pick for the rangers considering they've gone college heavy in the last few drafts so i think they could see if they can try and get more out of wyatt sanford as he develops at number 29, I have the Arizona Diamondbacks selecting second baseman Christian Moore out of Tennessee. Now, the Diamondbacks have another pick at 31 as an incentive pick, so I think they go safe with this one, and I think they go with a pretty safe pick in Christian Moore. The big thing with Christian Moore is the power, 55 power as of right now. Scouts are thinking 25, 30 home runs down the road. He's got great bat speed, great strength. Now, he can get a little aggressive at the plate, tends to chase. That's what knocks the hit tool down to a 50, and he's only a second baseman. So when it comes to the positional value at second base, that's going to lower his stock a little bit. So overall, though, I think he could end up being a really solid player down the road. I think this would be a nice pick for the D-backs. At number 28, I have the Houston Astros selecting outfielder Dakota Jordan out of Mississippi State. When it comes to Dakota Jordan, there's a lot of upside here because there's a lot of power and a lot of athleticism. He's got a 60 power and a 60 run. The hit tool, though, lowers his stock. He has improved his plate discipline in college, but he's still having trouble hitting breaking balls. And when it comes to hitting breaking balls, the Astros, going back the last few years, they've done a great job at hitting breaking balls. So I feel like they could develop this guy, really improve that area of his game and they could really unlock a lot of potential here now despite the 60 run tool he's still having a little trouble in the outfield when it comes to running his routes so it's pretty up in the air where he could play in the outfield but he definitely has the potential to play center if he can improve his route running either way though there's a lot of upside here and with the astros and their weaker farm system i think they should take advantage and they should go for a higher ceiling player at number 27 i have the philadelphia phillies selecting catcher caleb loma Vita out of the University of California. When it comes to Loma Vita, he's an athletic catcher. As you can see here, he's got a 50 run, but that's pretty high for a catcher. And he's also got some pop, a 55 power. He's shown good power at the University of California. That's a pretty good combination. Now, when it comes to the defense, he has the arm strength, but he's still harnessing, getting the ball out quicker, making quicker throws. And when it comes to the receiving, there still needs to be some polish. But again, he has that athleticism, so that should get better over time. And hey, you got a guy like JT Rail Muto in that system. That's not a bad guy to learn from. And when it comes to the Philadelphia Phillies system, you got Eduardo Tate at number eight overall, uh, but he's very far away. International signing, he's only 17 years old. So I think this would be a good pick overall for the Phillies to get a, a more advanced catcher in their system, especially JT Rail Muto not getting any younger. At number 26, I have the New York Yankees selecting third baseman Billy Amick out of Tennessee. Now, in the last couple of years, the Yankees have gone pretty high school heavy in the first round, but I think they go back to the college ranks here because Billy Amick is just a solid bat coming out of college. He's number 26 on pipeline, number 18 on Baseball America. This would be a nice bat for the Yankees to add in their system. Makes a lot of contact, has a lot of pop there. However, he can get a bit chase happy, cuts into those walks a little bit, but overall, one of the better bats coming out of college more likely just going to be a third baseman or a first baseman down the road not a lot of athleticism there not a lot of quickness the arm is fine he's played third base fine at Tennessee I think this would be a solid pick for the Yankees in the bottom half of the draft 
At number 25, I have the San Diego Padres selecting shortstop Kellen Lindsay out of Hardy High School in Florida. The name of the game for Kellen Lindsay is the athleticism shown here by the 75 run, one of the most athletic players in this entire draft. We know the Padres, the way they like to draft, they like to go for those uber athletic guys. Dylan Head was a recent example, recently traded him for Luis Arise, but Kellen Lindsay fits exactly the profile of how the Padres have been drafting. Now, when it comes to Kellen Lindsay and his bat, more of a line drive contact kind of a hitter. Not a lot of power as of right now, only a 40 power. But I expect that to get better as time goes on because of the athleticism that he's had. And he's made a lot of strides at the plate. He was also playing football earlier on in high school. He decided to focus solely on baseball, and he's making strides. Defensively, the fielding's fine, the arm is fine, but it's the athleticism overall that's going to carry him to any kind of a career later down the road. At number 24, I have the Atlanta Braves selecting pitcher William Schmidt out of Catholic High School in Louisiana. So as of right now, MLB Pipeline has Schmidt at number 12 overall. Baseball America has him at number 22. But there's not a lot of chatter out there as of right now when it comes to Schmidt. And I think the reason for that is his third pitch, a changeup, but it's only graded at a 50. You know, sure, does have a big fastball at 60, has a massive curveball, one of the best curveballs in this entire draft, graded as a 70. But when it comes to other high school pictures on the board like cash mayfield ryan sloan they have better third pictures at this point and when it comes to schmidt there is a bit of effort in that delivery so i wonder if that's kind of holding teams back on him a little bit and they're looking at you know guys like sloan and mayfield instead but when it comes to the braves in this spot i think this would be a nice pick for them and hey they're not afraid of picking pictures uh go back to 2020 they've picked a picture in the first round of the draft every single year in including a couple of high school pitchers in there too. So I think this would be a good pick for the Braves. And hey, they need to add more pitching to that organization. At number 23, I have the LA Dodgers selecting pitcher Ryan Sloan out of York High School in Illinois. And speaking of Sloan, I think this would be a great spot for him to land. Six foot five, a big righty, has a lot to offer. Has a great fastball. He can either cut it or sink it. Has one of the better change-ups in this draft, graded as a 60 and as a 55 slider to go along with it as well. Has a repeatable delivery, easy mechanics. Sounds like a perfect pick for the Dodgers. At number 22, I have the Baltimore Orioles selecting third baseman Tommy White out of LSU. When it comes to the Orioles and their drafts recently, they've been going for the polished bats, a lot of them coming out of college, and Tommy White is one of the best bats coming out of college in this draft. Take a look at his numbers so far at LSU this year, hitting 332, a 405 on base, a 646 slugging, OPS over 1,000, 24 homers, 70 RBIs. This would be a massive bat for the Orioles to add into this organization, has a 55 hit now he does chase a little bit but he rarely swings and misses and he comes with a lot of power hits for a ton of power barrels up the ball consistently this would be a very nice bat for the Orioles to add now you're not looking at a very athletic player you're probably going to be a first baseman down the road and a DH but the bat the quality of it is enough here for the Orioles to make this pick at number 21, I have the Minnesota Twins selecting pitcher Cash Mayfield out of Elk City High School in Oklahoma. Now, Cash Mayfield has been picking up a lot of steam lately. Teams love the upside that he has. He's a big lefty, six foot four, has a good fastball already, has a very good changeup to go along with it, throws a lot of strikes. But the big thing with Cash Mayfield is he has a lot of extension, really gives batters a tough at bats, especially the left handed batters. So, Cash Mayfield, he's getting a a lot of praise right now and even despite you know the number 28 ranking here on pipeline and 29 on baseball america i do expect him to go up a little higher and for the twins you know they have picked some high school pictures as of late uh, chase petty back in 2021 charlie soto in the compensation round last year at number 34 i think this would be a good upside pick for the twins at number 20, of have the Toronto Blue Jays selecting outfielder Vance Honeycutt out of the University of North Carolina. There is a lot of upside with Vance Honeycutt. As you can see here, has a 60 power and a 65 run. If we take a look at his stats so far this year, through 56 games, he has 24 home runs and 28 stolen bases. This is a real power speed threat, and he is dynamite out in the field, a true center fielder, gifted athleticism. The only problem with Vance Honeycutt, Honeycutt is he strikes out 
a lot. The plate discipline has been an issue with him in the past. Now, when it comes to the Toronto Blue Jays, if we go back the last few years, as you can see here, they have the third lowest strikeout percentage in all of Major League Baseball. This is an organization that is very high on plate discipline and not striking out too much. I think this would be the perfect organization for Vance Honeycutt to really get the most out of him. If they can clean up that plate discipline, you could end up having a superstar in Toronto. At number 19, have the New York Mets selecting outfielder Carson Bange out of Oklahoma State. If you're looking for a well-rounded, solid player, then Carson Bange is your guy. He's a very good hitter, has a 55 hit and a 55 power, makes consistent contact with pop to all fields, and it's showing this year at Oklahoma State. Through 60 games, hitting 336, a 447 on base, a 672 slugging, 18 home runs, 64 RBIs, has a little speed as well, 10 stolen bases on the year so far. Now, he's not going to be a barn burner by any means but the speed picks up as he gets going and with that has a very good arm has a 60 grade arm along with a 55 field he runs his routes very well in the outfield just a good solid player for the Mets to add and the way things have been going for the Mets in the last couple of years it might not hurt to add a safe player like Carson Bench. At number 18, I have the Tampa Bay Rays selecting utility man Seaver King out of Wake Forest. Now, the Rays in the past, they've liked to draft athletic players, and, well, Seaver King is definitely athletic. As you can see here, a 65 run. This guy is fast, and to go along with that, has a 55 field and a 55 arm. The question is, is where is he going to play long term? Doesn't have great hands in the infield, so scouts think his home is probably going to be more in the outfield long term, can probably be an everyday center fielder at some point. Now, the bat, he makes a lot of contact, as you can see here, 55 hit, but a lot of the times he does chase, and that can lead to a lot of weak contact, and he doesn't have the most strength to go along with it, only has a 45 power, so that could be an issue, but I could see the Rays wanting to tap into this potential that he has. He's definitely a high ceiling player because of the athleticism that he has and the ability to make contact that he has. So, Seaver King, I think could be a fun player, I think could be a great pick for the Rays. At number 17, I have the Milwaukee Brewers selecting third baseman Cam Smith out of Florida State. Now, if you go back to Cam Smith's freshman year at Florida State, it was not very good. Only hit 258, a 326 on base, had some power, a 517 slugging, and 12 home runs, but the plate discipline was bad. 66 strikeouts compared to the 21 walks. But then he went to the Cape Cod League, really cleaned some things up, had a good time there, 44 games, had a 981 OPS. Then this past year at Florida State, He's taken another step forward. He's having a monster year at Florida State, hitting 396, a 490 on base, a 682 slugging, a 1.171 OPS overall, 16 home runs. Now, he has really cleaned up the plate discipline here. 44 strikeouts compared to 36 walks. Still needs some improvement, but that is a huge step forward than what it was in 2023. And with the Brewers, they really like to go for those college players. And I wonder if Cam Smith, because of that plate discipline, falls down a little bit here he is ranked 14th overall so if he comes to the Brewers at this spot oh man that would be a great pickup for them they added Wilkin last year a power back could you imagine if they add Smith here who as of right now has a 50 power but the raw power is there this guy can hit bombs he just needs to really hone everything together and he can be a really good player at number 16, I have the Miami Marlins selecting infielder Theo Gillen out of Westlake High School in Texas. There's a lot of upside here with Theo Gillen, one of the top high school prospects in this entire draft. Very athletic with a very good bat. As you can see here, a 60 run with a 60 hit. Has very good plate discipline, great bat speed, can hit to all fields. More of a line drive hitter at this point, but definitely should have some more power as he develops a 55 power as of right now. That's not too bad for being 18 years old. Now, the problem with Theo Gillen is he had shoulder surgery not too long ago. So he's more of a second baseman at this point because of the arm strength. If it gets better, maybe he could play shortstop. Some scouts think maybe he, he can even play some center field because of the speed. But either way, a lot of upside here. You got Peter Bendix now running the show in Miami. This feels like a player that the Rays would draft. And since he's coming from the Rays, I expect him to bring that same philosophy here. High upside guy with a a lot of athleticism with a great bat.
Okay, Number 15, have the Mariners selecting outfielder Slade Caldwell out of Valley View High School in Arkansas. The Mariners have gone heavy on the high school picks in recent years, and I have them taking the back-to-back -back Gatorade Player of the Year in Arkansas, Slade Caldwell. Very athletic, very advanced hitter at the plate, makes good swing decisions, makes a lot of contact, not a lot of power at the moment with him, but that should get better as he develops. He also has a short, quick swing, so that should translate to more power down the road but on top of that he's very athletic this guy is just gonna burn the bases my goodness this would be an excellent pick for the Mariners at number 15. At number 14, I have the Chicago Cubs selecting pitcher Brody Brecht out of Iowa. The Cubs have not been shy about taking college arms in recent years, and this is a big college arm coming out of Iowa. Was a wide receiver for the football team at one point, but then he decided to stick with pitching, and I think that was a good move. As you can see here, a 70 fastball and a 70 slider. This guy is throwing around 100 miles an hour consistently and has a wipeout slider, an absolutely lethal combination, but... Uh, there is a little downside with Brody Brecht. As you can see here, has a splitter, but it's only a 50 grade at the moment. Doesn't throw it very consistently. And there is also some issues with the command. Doesn't throw a ton of strikes. But the Cubs, they've revamped their pitching development in the last few years. I could see them absolutely drooling over the upside with this guy. If they can get him in the lab, really work on these couple of things here, I think they could turn this guy into an absolute stud. At number 13, I have the San Francisco Giants selecting outfielder James Tibbs out of Florida State. Simply put, this guy can absolutely mash. He is having a great year at FSU. Overall, hitting 362 with a 486 on base, a 781 slugging, a 1.267 OPS, 25 homers, 84 RBIs. But he's also a disciplined hitter. He's gotten more disciplined as each year has gone by. Go back to his freshman year, he had 25 walks compared to 64 strikeouts that year and this year he has 51 walks and 30 strikeouts this guy is going to be a very good offensive player but as to the defense he's not very fast so most likely you're going to see him in left field first base dh but the bat is the calling card here it would be fun to watch this guy hit some bombs in the mccovey cove at number 12, I have the Red Sox selecting pitcher Cam Caminiti out of Seguero High School in Arizona. With Craig Breslow in the fold, who's placed much more of an emphasis on improving the pitching development in Boston, I can see them going pitching here, and why not go for one of the better high school arms in this draft that you can mold into your own as a possible ace down the road. And Caminiti has a lot of upside here. Already has a 60 fastball, has good velocity from the left side, throws a ton of strikes, and he has two above average average pitches as well he's got a 55 slider and a 55 changeup. I could see the Red Sox and Craig Breslow and the rest of the pitching development staff there being all over this guy I think this would be a great pick for Boston at number 11, I have the Detroit Tigers selecting outfielder Brayda Montgomery out of Texas A&M. The name of the game with Montgomery is power, and he has a lot of it, having a great year at Texas A&M, hitting 322 with a 452 on base, a 733 slugging, 27 home runs, 85 RBIs. There's a lot to like here with Brayda Montgomery, a switch hitter with power to all fields. There's a couple of weak spots with the bat. He tends to miss in the zone, and he tends to chase out of the zone, but if that can get cleaned up, he could be a special bat down the road but he has a massive arm in the outfield fits well for right field down the road he's projected to go in the top 10 so I'm falling here to number 11 to the Tigers I simply just don't see the Tigers passing on a possible special bat like Braden Montgomery at number 10, I have the Washington Nationals selecting second baseman J.J. Weatherhull out of West Virginia. There's a lot to like here with Weatherhull, and the bat is the calling card. Has a 70-hit tool, one of the best bats in this draft. Not a lot of power, but he makes consistent hard contact to all fields. He should be a very good hitter in pro ball. More likely going to be a second baseman. He's very athletic, has good speed, but more likely going to be a second baseman. The arm, I don't think fits well for shortstop he has the range though to be a very good second baseman this would be an excellent pick for the nationals at number 10 
At number nine, I have the Pittsburgh Pirates selecting shortstop Bryce Rayner out of Harvard-Westlake High School in California. There's a lot of upside here with Bryce Rayner, the best high school shortstop in this class. This would be a great pick for the Pittsburgh Pirates at number nine. Look at the grades here. Has a 55 hit and a 60 power already in high school. He's a six foot three. He's only going to grow more into that frame, and he already has a 60 power tool. Are you kidding me? He has power to all fields. He's shown some of the best exit velocities in the country this year uh so you're definitely not gonna have any questions with the bat with Rayner and he's very good in the field as well he's very smooth out there he's got good speed has a good arm Bryce Rayner gets a lot of comparisons to Corey Seager that sounds like a pretty good pick for the Pittsburgh Pirates. At number eight, I have the LA Angels selecting pitcher Trey Savage out of East Carolina. The Angels really need to improve the pitching in their organization. And at this point in this mock draft, Trey Savage is the best available pitcher. And I can't see the Angels passing on him. This would be a great pitcher to add to their organization. He's got four pitches. Three of them are plus pitches. He's got a 60 fastball, good velocity there, a good slider, and a good splitter as well. And has a decent curveball to go along with it. He's got a Big frame, six foot four. He throws a lot of strikes. There is some effort in his delivery, but in the end, I think the Angels, they just really need to add pitching, and I think this would be a great one to add. At number seven, I have the St. Louis Cardinals selecting pitcher Hagen Smith out of Arkansas. As for the next best pitcher available on this draft, there is no way the Cardinals should pass on Hagen Smith if he's available. There is a lot to like here with Hagen Smith. He's having a great year at Arkansas. He's 9-2, ERA of a 2.04, 17.3 strikeouts per nine. He had a 17 strikeout game against Oregon. He was absolutely nasty in that game. Now, with Hagen Smith, he's got a big velocity on the fastball 65 grade from the left side along with a nasty slider as well that's a lethal combination what holds him back a little bit here is the lack of a quality third pitch has a splitter graded as a 50 but doesn't throw it very much if he can develop that third pitch a bit more maybe even add another pitch down the road at some point this guy could be absolutely nasty in the major leagues at number six, I have the Kansas City Royals selecting first baseman Jack Caglione out of the University of Florida. He had the nickname College Otani because he could hit and pitch, but when it came to the pitching, he had good velocity, had a decent changeup, but he struggled to throw strikes. He lacked the command, so more likely he's just going to stick to hitting, but that is not a bad thing at all. This guy has power for miles, one of the best power tools in this draft, graded as a 70, has a 55 hit to go along with it, but this guy makes consistent hard contact to all fields this guy is going to absolutely mash now when it comes to the hit tool out of 55 as of right now tends to chase a lot but he doesn't swing and miss a lot he doesn't strike out a lot either so i think he's going to be fine again the power is the calling card with this guy he's very good defensively at first base at first base as well i think this would be a fantastic pick for the royals at number six at number five, I have the Chicago White Sox selecting Connor Griffin out of Jackson Prep in Mississippi. This guy could be a five-tool star down the road in the major leagues. There's a lot of upside here with Connor Griffin. He has a ton of power and very athletic. Has a 60 power tool, a 65 run, and he's very good in the field. Has a 70 arm and a 60 field tool. Now, the question is, where is he going to play? He could either be a gold glove center fielder or a gold glove shortstop. That's how good this guy is man uh, but again getting back to the power has a 60 power tool has big exit velocities to all fields and he's six foot four only 18 years old imagine once he develops a bit more grows more into that frame this guy could be ridiculous now when it comes to the hit tool he has a 50 hit tool because there are some timing issues with him at the plate but if he gets that cleaned up this guy could be an absolute star for the White Sox down the road and hey with the way things are going with the White Sox in recent years they could definitely use someone like him with the four Fourth pick, I have the Oakland A's selecting second baseman Travis Bazana out of Oregon State. A lot of mock drafts out there have Bazana going number one overall. He is the number one prospect in this draft. But I could see the Guardians, Reds, and Rockies passing on Bazana because they already have long-term options at second base. I can see him moving very fast through a system. And because they already have those long-term options, I could see them going another way. I know you don't necessarily draft for need in a draft, but I think this is a bit of a different situation 
because again, I think he will rise fast through an organization. But if the Oakland A's end up with Travis Bazana, that would be an awesome get for them. This guy is going to be a great hitter in the major leagues, has a 60 hit, 60 power tool, makes consistent hard contact to all fields against both lefties and righties, has some pop as well. Wouldn't be a surprise at all to see this guy hit 25, 30 home runs a year while putting up a good batting average at the same time. I mean, this guy is having a phenomenal year at Oregon State. 60 games so far, hitting 407 with a 568 on base, a 911 slugging, 28 homers, 66 RBIs. I mean, you know, times are tough right now with the Oakland A's, but if they end up getting him by the time they're in Vegas, that could be one of their top stars for the future. This would be a great pick for the Oakland A's. With the third pick, I have the Colorado Rockies selecting first baseman Nick Kurtz out of Wake Forest. You could argue Nick Kurtz is the most complete hitter in this draft. He's extremely disciplined at the plate, and he just mashes to all fields against both righties and lefties. This would be a huge get for the Rockies, and he has had an amazing career in college at Wake Forest. Over three seasons and 164 games, he's hit 333 with a 510 on base. He's gotten on base half the time in his college career. That is nuts. With a 725 slugging, OPS at 1235, 61 home runs over the 164 games with 182 RBIs. Plays a good first base as well. I think this would be a great pick for the Rockies, and hey, a while back, they all also picked a first baseman, ended up being a Hall of Famer by the name of Todd Helton. I'm just saying. Uh, Nick Kurtz, the Rockies would be a great pairing. They have a bright future. They have a lot of good prospects. They have six top 100 prospects at this point. Adding Nick Kurtz to that, oh, that would just be insane. At number two, we have the Cincinnati Reds selecting outfielder Charlie Condon out of the University of Georgia. This is actually a good story. He was a walk-on at the University of Georgia, and he has mashed since going there. Look at these numbers he's putting up this year. Over 57 games, he's hitting 446 with an on-base of 566, a slugging of 1.036. He has a 1602 OPS overall, 36 home runs. That's a record since the BBCOR was put into play place that's where the bats are less springy than they used to be remember those stealth bats years ago where anything would just pop off those things now the bats closely or more closer to a wood bat so 36 home runs I mean that's remarkable in today's game 77 RBIs this guy is just having an insane season a historical season but the raw power is definitely the name of the game here with Charlie Condon he's massive he's six foot six has strength to go along with it so even if he misses hits a ball you could still have you know an accidental home run I mean that's how much power that's how much raw power this guy has as a good hit tool I mean we just saw you know the batting average he's putting up this year very good plate discipline doesn't really strike out all that much now the one thing that holds Condon back is the defense uh, he's not the, he's not gonna be the fastest out there but because he's so big he's gonna be able to cover a lot of ground and he has a pretty good arm to go along with it so he should be fine in a corner outfield spot uh, or maybe he could play first base down the road at some point. But again, uh, the bat is looking very special right now. I just don't see how the Reds can pass on this at number two. He could end up being a great player for the Reds down the road. And at number one, I have the Cleveland Guardians selecting Chase Burns out of Wake Forest. I could see the Guardians getting creative with this pick. Now, when it comes to the number one pick, I think you should draft either a shortstop or a catcher that you can build around because those are the two most high-valued positions in the game. So like the Orioles drafting Jackson Holiday or Adley Rushman, or you pick a pitcher that's just a can't-miss guy like Paul Skeens last year with the Pirates. Now, when it comes to Chase Burns, this guy has all the makings of being an ace down the road. So I could see the Guardians going with an underslot deal here to try and maximize their entire draft. I don't know. I can just see the Guardians doing something like that, trying to get as much value out of this draft as possible. Now, if you pick Chase Burns here, I mean, there is nothing wrong with that. This guy is absolutely nasty. He's got a massive fastball, 65 grade, has a good amount of velocity there, has a wipe out slider. It's so nasty. Big curve ball to go along with it a solid change up as well you know when it comes to all the pictures here he's the only one with three 
three plus pitches and has an above average pitch to go along with that. Now, when it comes to strike throwing, he uh, he can lack some command sometimes. Now, his strike throwing has gotten a lot better over the last couple of years, but there are times where he can lose command a little bit. So he's going to have to improve that at the major league level. But when it comes to the Guardians, I mean, look at all the pitching they've been developing. You know, adding Chase Burns to this system, I mean, this would be insane. He would be your future ace. That Guardians rotation at some point in the next few years could be absolutely nasty with all the pitching that they have already. You know, you got Tanner Bybee, you know, got Gavin Williams, right? I mean, there's Tristan McKenzie. There's so many young pitchers there already. And to put Chase Burns at the top of that rotation, oof, that would be nasty. And again, they would be saving money here with this pick because Chase Burns is expected to go a little lower than this while guys like Charlie Condon, Travis Bazana are expected to go one, two. So the Guardians would probably save some money here. I think this would be a great pick for them at number one. But that is my first mock draft of draft season. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Which player do you think is going to go number one overall? Which player do you want your favorite team to draft in this year's Major League Baseball draft. But everyone, that's all I have for right now. Thanks for watching. On the way out, if you can, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'll talk to you next time.